as you are, a community-based organisation run in a, in a wonderful way, you know, from the grassroots up, with a lot of voluntary support. Um, that kind of input is priceless, but sometimes you do need to have access to resources that exist already, in a place like the Horniman or the VNA where we are today. Um, I think that they, they, an institution of this kind that's been going for over a hundred years has got massive resources, not just money, but in terms of intelligence, knowledge and contacts. And for PRSSV to come into, into connection with, with places like that means that those kind of opportunities open up for you as well. I think it also can't do any harm to your members and to um, how you're perceived more generally across London and across Britain that you've done something here because it's going to boost your credibility and I would imagine that your members will feel we've arrived a little bit and I think that's great because it may, makes them feel that the 20-year journey to have gotten to this point is actually going somewhere. So I think having that kind of um, connection is great as long as you don't lose the particular qualities about yourself which have made the V&A interested in you. And I think that if you change overnight to being something else, that's something that perhaps one ought to be a bit cautious about. Because you've got certain qualities that the VNA hasn't got. For all its wealth in so many different ways, it doesn't have that direct connection with the popular, with, with the public of, of London the same way as you do. This is a 12th century bronze, uh, Shiva Nataraj of the Chola, Chola dynasty. He's dancing on a dwarf, if you notice, and that's actually ignorance. He is, he's got the little dumru in his hand, in the right hand, which if you notice, and that is actually signifying creation. We have uh, the wheel, which is for time. My son takes part in a, uh, the PRSSV, plays the tabla for them. He's one of their students. And we were requested to become volunteers because they wanted to create this trail in the various museums to show Indian music and the growth of Indian music or the various different instruments that they had. And I thought that would be a good opportunity for me to get an in-depth knowledge of what it was all about. Having grown up outside India, you're not that uh, familiar with most of the instruments, so I put my name down. This is uh, Sunny Jain. Again, to signify his importance, they have celestial musicians all around. You can see the dhol, you can see the dumru, the, you can see the horn. You can see it just just focus on that and you can see it's it's a beautiful piece of the again the 12th century 1168 AD we had a meeting and uh, we then had a visit over here to the Victoria Albert Museum whereby we met with a curator who took us around and actually gave us an in-depth understanding of the various instruments that were used and what they signified and why they were with particular celestial beings. Um, it was very interesting. It was only, a, it was very short in fact. I would have loved to have it a bit longer. It's a fantastic venue. Uh, when I mentioned to my friends and, uh, and other people that I know that we were, have, we, we were actually performing at the VNA, they couldn't get over it. They said, at the VNA, how on earth did you manage to do that? It's, it's a confidence booster for the children as well to come over there and show their performance to the general public. Normally when they perform, it is to a select audience where you can know about music. This is going to be something completely different and outside their normal scope.
A lot of populations like like ours um, have come to Britain and we carry with us intangible heritage. We couldn't bring temples and mosques with us, although we've started building them now, but we carry with us a sense of a culture and a connection to a culture that's maybe a long way away. And they're very much part of what has made the world a wonderful place to be and now makes a place like Britain a wonderful place to be. So the idea of being able to share heritage is actually those that are carried by people who come from those parts of the world is also very important to HLA. Places like this tend to be run in very small departments by experts but working quite often in isolation from each other. What you've brought is actually a complete whole that connects with it in a very meaningful way. It helps people who are coming here regularly to make more sense of the collections that are here because you're bringing in living traditions to complement traditions that have been there and captured in stone or in paintings or whatever. So you're bringing something which is alive, and I think that's something that's not just alive, but you're also bringing new audiences in. So there's a number of different ways in which places like the Horner, places like the V&A, you're doing things that they can't do, which is the way that a partnership should be, really. I would hope that the V&A would actually want to do more things with you over, over a period. I mean, this project has only just really begun. It's taken 20 years to get here, but it's just begun. And now will unfold and leave a legacy, which the V&A itself can use, and to make a sense of its collections. I mean, the fact that you've got a trail, which means that people can navigate a path around it, which is quite meaningful. And it goes over and above what's on the panels. I think on the panels is great, wonderful curatorial descriptions. But when you've got stuff that's being said by people who've come from those cultures and they're reinterpreting it and then engaging others in that as well, I mean, they should be paying you, actually. The Tibbutz Tiger, which is the keyboard that works with the winding instrument, that was absolutely amazing. And it also brings back the Indian history in there, which people get to know about and understand. So they just turn the handle, do they? Yeah. yeah, and then if you turn the handle, then the sound comes yeah. from that instrument. Oh, okay. It's the, uh, the growling sound of the tiger, and then uh, this, uh, this uh, man shouting in pain. Oh, okay. That sound comes from the instrument. And when you, it's a hand-driven instrument. Tipu Sultan, he was the king of Mysore. Okay. And it was discovered from his music room after his death. Yeah. Oh, okay. It allows all of us gathered here today to experience and participate in a magnificent world cultural heritage which has come from elsewhere and has its roots in the dawn of civilization but is now equally at home in what Britain, modern Britain, thinks of and its own sense of itself. The performance you're going to see originated in North India but you'll see it performed now in many different parts of London as well as many different parts of the country. And in fact, PRSSV has done a great deal to ensure that future generations, and I'm surrounded by quite a few of the next generation at my feet here, will carry those traditions on. So for that reason, the first reason, we're delighted to support this particular cultural heritage, enabling you all to join in with it.
that project it was it was a great chance to work with the dancer and also for me to learn the repertoire because unless you learn it, unless you know how to speak the bows and unless you have it in your mind or in your body, it takes time to actually digest. You know, unless you do that, you cannot play anything. You can only keep a groove. This project, I think one very important aspect was that it was not only the Western drums and the katak which interacted, but it was also the other musicians. Uh, we have a fantastic flute player, we have fantastic salute, and we have the South Indian vocals. So for that fusion piece, which was like the prime piece of our project, we have, we have used some guts which are coming from the North Indian tradition, but we also used some, uh, uh, some tanas from the South Indian tradition, as well as some Western beats. So working with different musicians, especially in North and South India, it's, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great experience. I'm a normal teacher, I'm just teaching them Kathak, how to technically be correct and you know, what is Tukra, what is Ahmad, all that. But linking all these things together, it's very, very important for them to know what does it means when you're standing in front of so many people on a stage and performing, because one day they have to be there performing for audience and I wanted them to be uh, you can say performing artists, not only you know taking Kathak as a, as a hobby, they should know Kathak as a performing level. I've been learning for a year now almost, um, and it was the first time I've actually seen her perform professionally, and I was really looking forward to it. And to see her do all those intricate movements was so important because it makes you kind of want to aspire to to get even close to that good. Museum will benefit. Um, in that, it's brought life, it's animated collection. The objects do not come to life by themselves, I and mean, they come to life by the people who come to see them. And what you've done today, I think, will help the museum enormously.